Welcome to the July, as far as I know, 1920, 20, what is it, 2022? Yeah. What year is it? What day? All right. So welcome to Pacific Northwest Sculptors July meeting. Um, the privilege to be back here at Marty Eichinger's studio. We've been here a number of times over the years. And uh, Marty being one of our founders, this is kind of like coming home in a way. Um, we're going to see some interesting things tonight. Before we do that, I got a couple of quick announcements for you. Um, our annual picnic, which has not been annual for a couple of years now, but it's annual again, will be um, August 28th. It's going to be at the Oregon Society of Artists Garden. So they've given us the use of their facilities for, for the day. It's a, it's a uh, Sunday, as I believe. So um, that'll be a potluck. There'll be information in the newsletter about that. So uh, pay attention and keep your eyes open. Um, it'll be a potluck. I think we have some drinks provided, but it's BYO. Uh, let's see. Our virtual show, our virtual collaboration show is coming together. That should go live on our website around September 1st, give or take a little. Um, We've lost a few members, but at this present time, I think we still have about um, eight pairs of people, 16 or so. So that, that should be interesting, I'm hoping. We are participating in Art in the Pearl again this year. Uh, we have a booth set up to do demonstrations. We have been at Art in the Pearl every year since Art in the Pearl has been Art in the Pearl. All right. um, anybody who's interested in doing some demos, get in touch with Andy. Yes, for Art in the Pearl. I think Please, we, come talk to me. we still have it. We still have a few openings. Last on the last on the list here, we are considering moving our storage facility from where it is currently in uh, in Milwaukee. We're looking at a few options. Once we make up our minds, we're downsizing a lot of the stuff we have stored because it's costing us money, and it's been going up regularly for the last couple of years. And we're it's time to move and save us some money. That's going to require a work party. We're going to be looking for volunteers. That's probably still a month or two out. So keep your eyes open. There'll be plenty of news in the uh, newsletter about that. So now we are in Marty Eichinger's studio. This is home of um, now the geode. And I'll let Marty explain all that to you. I have known Marty for now probably five or six years. I met him through a Pacific Northwest Sculptors meeting. Um, he buttonholed me the very first time I hosted a meeting and challenged me, how come your sculptures aren't life-size? And I thought, what are you talking about? Um, I showed up at his studio a couple of weeks later just to check things out. And I walked in and it's like, oh, now I get it. You know, so um, Marty has been a mentor to me. He's um, friends and he's an incredible sculptor. And tonight he's going to show us his new stuff. He's, he's into something completely new. So I am going to let Marty take it from here and I'm going to remove the camera from the tripod and then it'll be jiggle cam from there. So for you guys at home, I hope you don't get seasick, but um, he's gonna walk us through some of the cool stuff that he's working on. So Marty. And the inside scoop is that I had a stroke about uh, uh, a dozen years ago or so now. And it prevented my, it was a stroke that was actually in my right visual cortex. And it prevented me from coordinating my three-dimensional orientation. Points. So I couldn't see correctly in the third dimension, which is kind of critical if you're a sculptor, <laughs> especially if you're trying to do, you know, faces, because faces require that you have very, very good uh, perception about what's forward and what's backward. So when I was sculpting faces in particular, I was warping them and turning them into uh, disasters. And I wouldn't see it until I saw a photograph of it or I looked at a sculpture in a mirror. And so it was like, well, this is really, I was depressed for a couple of years. It was uh, very hard for me to walk away from something that I loved for a very, very long time. Well, when I had my stroke, yeah, yeah I, I knew enough about medicine. My partner is a nurse, and so, you know, I had a little bit of background. And a couple of aspirin prevented me from not being completely blind. You know, so my vision has come back. I can see from both eyes, and both of them see 
okay together. It's just that all of your faces are distorted. <laughs> if, I, if I get close. I was going to say, I was going to try to help fix that. I can make the prosthesis for you. Uh, so, figuring out how to um, reorganize myself while my friends who are doctors and lawyers were starting to take classes in sculpture and painting and watercolors. It's like, well, I am not going to become a doctor or a lawyer. Um, <laughs> so I just needed to start all the way over and say, okay, what would I do uh, if I was choosing art for the first time, like if I was 18 years old? And I decided, well, first I'd want it to be abstract. I'd like it to be... Uh, uh, contemporary, meaning using new materials. And uh, I've experimented with a lot of different materials over the years. And one of them that I did not understand very well was how epoxy works. And so uh, when the pandemic started, I isolated myself in here and started making little samples, you know, four or five inches by maybe a foot of all these different experiments that you can do when you mix epoxy add ingredients, and I discovered some interesting things. And so I'm still in the process of discovering interesting things. Uh, the most, I mean, all of these things, if you look around the room at the things around the table, um, all of them have different materials that I've experimented with. Some of them are crystals in the epoxy. Um, one of the primary ingredients, if you look at one of these things, like, like this one, or me, this one is a better example. You see a lot of parallel lines. Uh, this was an accident. This was done using uh, mica powders. And mica, mica, if you know what a mica crystal is, you know, it, if, you, if you get a a mica crystal, it's layered like pieces of paper. You can peel it off. And it's because the ionic charge in mica uh, is attractive in one dimension and repels in the other direction. So if it's powdered and you put it into uh, an amorphous mixture, it wants to align and not align. So these lines that you see here are the result of the liquid with the mica powder in it, flowing, and then setting up over the course of six or eight hours. So I create a composition and then, you know, work on it for two, three hours. And then the next day I come back and these patterns have magically appeared. So it's kind of like I've got the uh, humble still skin coming in while I go to bed and working it and completing it for me. How did you figure this out? That this is what was going totally on? by mistake. I mean, how did you figure out about the, the layers and how it separates? I mean, did you go to investigate after you saw what? Oh yeah, yeah. Out? Well, oh, well I, you know, I collect crystals, so I knew a little bit about how crystals work. And uh, I mean, a lot of painters use uh, mica uh, in their in their work, but they don't use it for this purpose. It has to be. This is more like a geologic person process, you know, where it's actually setting up and it's ionic charge kind of controls it. And so once I figured that out, I've been trying to do other things with that. And so I can control the overall colors. Like each one of these are two or three eighth inch layers. So they're a little bit like watercolor where we can get one you can touch these. You don't have to be afraid. But uh, like, does like, heat affect it or, or vibrations or energy or any of that? Um, it does. Okay. You know, if you if you get these things hot, uh, they cure faster, mm -hmm. and it inhibits some of what I want to have happen. So I don't want it to get yeah. too hot too fast. Yeah. But I also don't want it to get too slow. So the speed of the cure makes a big difference and the heat controls that. 
Why do you like, said layers, three layers of epoxy? Three or four, yeah. yeah. So are you letting, are you doing one layer, but it's set for eight hours, and not the next no, you do no, another no. layer? Two days. Two days, two days between uh, pours, so that it has adequate time to do this deal. And uh, so like, if you look at this one from this side, you can see the, uh, the original patterns that I created. And then um, on this side, you get to see the, the over layers that adjusted that. And uh, all of them change, you know, you put them up and put light, you know, they are uh, dramatic uh, from both directions. This one kind of looks like the bubble or something. Yeah. Yeah. Like, do you do any stress yeah. polishing on it or between the layers yeah. or on the surface? Uh, not between the layers, okay. but we are doing that. You know, like this piece is not, a lot of these pieces are not finished. You know, this one hasn't even had the edges browned off yet. This one just came out of a mold. And uh, we will take the, the back side of these things and we'll uh, put a new layer of clear resin on it to get it to be reflective. So, I mean, when you have a reflective surface, it's you see way more into it than if it's flat. So this surface that you see here is from the mold that we poured these things into. What's the mold for him? Um, are you coating the silicone rubber with some special substance or something to release the mold? Well, we're using silicone rubber molds. Okay. So they are used naturally. The matte finish on the bottom, is that just natural for that? Sure. Let's walk back here. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah. 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 This is a and uh, this is a piece of fresh finish. The guy who is my uh, assistant, uh, lazy get again, helps uh, because this is fairly fast. So you can eat the mix up for you. The this, is, this is three layers. This has three layers. If you look at the edge, you can see all three of those layers. Are these uh, like chunk inclusions that you threw in there? Or did you yeah. use the yeah. same yeah. As you did from the more epoxy? No. 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 Uh, I think the, the, the round ones are glass beads. Oh. You know? So I have a whole bunch of glass beads and different kinds of glass pieces that we dyed. We dyed them with the same kind of uh, dye that we uh, put in the resin. So the resin became this color that was sort of dyed along with the resin. And then when you, like if you look carefully at this one, it's not You can see that a lot of the color here it's actually bleeding out. I, I do, I see that. So that's the dye that's on the glass. And then when we pour resin on it, um, we've gotten the, the dye to flow. It, the epoxy re-energizes the dye that's dried on the glass and floats. Yeah, that's glass fiber. And, uh, I just started using glass fiber to try to make lime quality inside. Compositions. Oh, would this, would this have take the dye in the same way that have you, could you apply the dye to these and, and then string that around? Well? That's possible. I haven't tried that yet. I'm going to take notes. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. I'll do that tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> have you had a good success with the first Yeah, I'll show you the ones that I've used out here. That, this doesn't have any fiber in it, this just has spheres and rocks. So I have two different size spheres. And I have the big spheres on this side, the little spheres on this side. And then I poured resin into this area and let it flow out. So the first thing I poured was the purple. And then I poured yellow. And then I poured orange. And then I at last poured clear. And it pushed all the colors out to the outside edge as it was growing. I think that's a little cool piece. Let me try it. I have some. I haven't tried it yet. That would be cool. 
Yeah. 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 That's the benefit of the suit. So, you so, yeah. so, yeah. so, yeah. 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 okay. I have to put a calendar out and say, tomorrow I'm going to drive a fire. So, would you move the fire tomorrow? Or would you just do a fire? Yeah. 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 Yeah, or you guys over here earlier because I was so confused. I don't see most of those are out there. The ones that are done or signed, I just sign with a sharpie. So, um, so we started talking about the texture, and uh, this is uh, the mold that we use to make the molds. So we built this so that we could pour rubber into this, and then uh, the texture that's on this uh, ends up being the texture that's on the rubber. Uh, silicone rubber is pretty remarkable material. You can you can take a mold of a LP album, cast epoxy into it, and you can play the damn thing. Really? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. You can. It's you not quite high fidelity, but you can do it. Yeah. Which the product? Which silicone rubber is this? What kind of silicone do you use? Silicon rubber? Silicon rubber? Two part. Two part. Two part. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Aren't they all the same? No. Not about this. There's so many. Well, I just I just choose the ones that are going to have. Not for the same thing. Yeah. So I I don't know. I am I am like I'm a total just starting out with a good thing. So basically if somebody offers me some money, I'll probably say yes to that unless it's insulting. Yeah. 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 You're, on, you're on camera, you know. <laughs> it's a wide <laughs> mic. Well, the epoxy, <laughs> the, the silicone rubber, which is all the epoxy more expensive. Uh, uh, you know, these, these are uh, curlless rubbers. Uh, and just spread them on the edge. And they're not safe. They're safe. They're safe. They're Thank you. 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 Thank
things are okay. dissolving quickly into uh, the, the typical drinking and networking here. <laughs> Well, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you for sharing with us, Chaz. That was awesome. Okay. Thank All right, you. folks. Well, thanks for attending. Right. Hey, thanks, I couldn't man. be here in person. Thank you. Have really appreciate time. it. Thanks for okay. doing it. Bye-bye.